Hello and welcome to the Weekend Review from the Voiro Podcast, where we talk about the goings on in the world of advertising, monetization, content, and the internet at large. With me is Kavita Shanoi, founder and CEO of Voiro, and I'm Anand. Welcome to this week's episode. How are you, Kavita? Good, good, Anand. I'm so again glad it's Friday. I think I say this on every podcast. We've had yeah. quite a week. Yesterday we had almost a 15-hour day where I. Opened my eyes and I saw you and I before I went to sleep, we were on a call. Yeah. But it was a it was a great week and I hope it continues. And we have our Singapore trip coming up. Very excited, I, very excited. It's been yeah. more than two years. Yeah, that was your last business trip out. Right? That was that nice. was nice. Okay, so I got up on Monday morning and I sent you all Scott Galloway's um, Mercy or Malice. I think that's what his mm-hmm. um, his his um, his blog is called and he speaks about TikTok and then eMarket also covered the entire TikTok revenue that was released and it's astonishing and he his article is called Tick Tick or TikTok Boom mm-hmm. right and uh, Netflix unfortunately is going through a bad time they were valued at some point at 300 billion dollars and today they are at 80 billion and TikTok surprise surprise is at 360 billion that's insane and counting did you, were you ever on TikTok when it was popular? I know India, we've banned it and things like that. But I mean, there's lots of stuff happening on uh, Instagram. I am not actively on any of the short video apps. But there was a point where I wanted to see what the fuss was all about. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm probably betraying my age now a little bit. But I downloaded TikTok. And the next thing I knew, it was six hours later. <laughs> so I, I get what the... Yeah, you know, the the statistic is that um, every every video on TikTok is about 25 seconds long and an, the average time that they spend is about 11 minutes. So technically, if you had to use TV terms, it's about you watch about 26 episodes in one sitting. And the thing is that everything is so fast. It's so well choreographed. Everything is so, it's so, it's so well done. It's, it's quite mesmerizing. But it has a bunch of downsides as well. But before we get to the downsides, the upsides of it is that it's commanding about 2% of global ad revenue, which is insane. Their worldwide ad revenue is about $4 billion and um, was $4 billion, and they're moving to about $12 billion this year, three times. And the U.S. accounts for 50% of this, which is nuts. And uh, if you take in Doyen, am I pronouncing it right? Which is the Chinese TikTok version and TikTok, they account for about 5% of overall ad revenue. So uh, to put into context... Twitter and Snapchat both have 5 billion in ad revenue, which, I mean, they they were around before TikTok. Uh, you know, everybody was there. They're trying to copy a lot of stuff that TikTok was doing. I remember when Snapchat came out with that entire r- rainbow from your mouth business and we didn't know what was going on with Snapchat. Before we knew it, TikTok came and pulled the rug out from under their feet. Right. So some of the things that we were talking about on TikTok, the highlights obviously is that it's it's an extremely uh, engaging platform. Um, you know, ad, advertisers are looking at it in a very, very different way. They are doing a lot of things in terms of um, uh, brand advertising and content development along with influencers. And, and then they're promoting what influencers have created for the brand, which is a very interesting take versus just plain Jane advertising or product placement and so on and so forth. Um, there is this, there is this thing uh, which is also um, which is like a movement across the world, which is talent liquidity, right? Um, earlier, one, you'd hear stories of people from Allahabad making their way all the way down to Bombay, or somebody catching a flight and going to with LA no money in their with pockets. no money in yeah. their pockets, and then making it big. And there was this whole rags to riches story that was specifically uh, to do with changing geographies. Even us, we keep. We keep asking ourselves, should we move out of the country to be successful? Because there was there was a huge there were a huge number of people, even in our friend circle, who've left us and gone away to different countries. But with TikTok today, we find that there is a huge amount of talent liquidity because of the access that TikTok gives them in their creator tools for them to have great creatives, great content at a click of a button. And today, there is, there's so much happening in smaller towns. I know a friend of yours actually manages influencers, right? And brings them on board and things like that. And that kind of job didn't even exist earlier. So there are, there are going to be so many secondary effects of just this company becoming as big as it is. But the downside is this whole 
what we're the attention arbitration as we're talking about i mean today kids can't watch long form content that was made maybe 2 years ago it's too slow i find stuff that was made maybe in the 90s a little too slow for me because the editing is not sharp enough the storyline is a little slower i mean yeah. i'm like get there faster right and it's they're not getting there faster so my kids are currently on a digital, digital detox in my house but uh, I keep telling them after this article that your prefrontal cortex is not developed so you can't make any decisions and you can't control your impulses but you know it's a joke in the house right now but it's serious because there are going to be huge impacts of what we are doing to our children today and TikTok can either become one of the you know the the flag bearers of the biggest revenue uh, in the video space or we're going to look at a huge meltdown of the future generation because we don't know what what kind of effects it's going to have one of the things that fascinates me is every time i read a story about what tiktok has opened up which is not just tiktok but tiktok and their competitors here in india everyone from moj to taka tak to josh um there are two things that fascinate me about the entire story yeah despite me not being a consumer of the app one is this this the sheer mathematics of tiktok and short video as a yeah. format and to his subcultures the mathematics of course anywhere i look my jaw just dry i haven't picked it up from the floor just yet um, all the statistics you mentioned but anil our cto was talking to us a couple of days ago about how tiktok has actually unlocked a new pool of attention mm. because the way to consume tiktok like you said 25 second 20 second 10 second means that it has the ability to fill up a lot of space When I think about advertising and I trace it back to the last 30 40 years a lot of advertising was built on this concept of a limited supply of attention and if you go all the way back to simpler times with morning newspapers families who gather around a television in the evening and maybe the radio if you have access to a car if you had access to a car attention was still limited today what tiktok has done and anil was talking about how a lot of people look at tiktok or reels or shorts in between meetings during meetings in between conversations while commuting the mathematics for me that's most interesting is this asymptotic nature almost of how the pool of attention is inching closer and closer and closer to the pool of time itself and that seemingly infinite pool is actually also not that infinite because everyone's competing for that pool reed hastings i think back in the early days of netflix made this statement that still sticks with me which is he said netflix's biggest competitor is you going out for the evening yeah so this competition for the same pool of attention for the same pool of time for the same pool of entertainment is i think what everybody from cable to print to digital to different apps are now including folks who are building for the metaverse are sitting up and realizing that they are all part of the same game it's just that they're approaching it from different angles but also subcultures i was reading the um, uh, one of the annual reports i want to say 3 years ago from doyin which was shared on twitter where they were talking about how if you look at tiktok in in uh, asia versus tiktok in the united states the demographics of people who do dance challenges are fundamentally different because in asian countries a lot of folks were native to smartphones they skipped the pc generation and went straight to smartphones so they were a lot more comfortable with the format with the form factor and the willingness to dance shakil o'neil who would be very happy to be quoted in this podcast was on jimmy kimmel a couple of days ago and he was talking about how his favorite music app is world star hip hop not spotify not apple music i've never heard of it i've never heard of it did you go look it up of course i did <laughs> but it's almost like how soundcloud has a very different subculture yeah. and i had a friend who recently said i'm very happy that the varo podcast is on soundcloud because he yeah. will not use spotify he will not use apple music he chooses to use soundcloud there was a lady from sugar cosmetics who was at i tech the conference who was talking about how their brand behaves very differently on moj as opposed to um taka tak or josh yeah. because one of them is more educational one of them is more entertainment content so the subcultures of these apps also determine the mathematics of why someone advertises and what they come there to do so it's just it's unlocked a different universe this concept of why somebody advertises right on tiktok 
there are so many there are so many ways to make revenue and they are not sticking to just one and they are constantly experimenting recently they have rolled out live subscriptions which means that if a user uh, i mean if a content creator has about uh, at least 1000 followers they are able to charge their users a monthly subscription for live and live is becoming a big deal as well right now in terms of product discovery trials um you know talking about various types of experiences and people actually following this live stream because it's not exactly appointment viewing but you know somebody's going to go live in yeah. some time and you get on it and and again it's short term right the kind of investment of time that you give there is really really short and you don't know what's going to happen and we're all used to live as well and you don't know and you you're always surprised by what's going to come up in live the other thing that i was uh, talking about uh, you know to you the other day was about the about brands in the metaverse you know metaverse and me have this like relationship where i'm like this looks like sims but on crack <laughs> but anyway i mean it it is still like that for me but the kind of games and the kind of integrations for brands etc that they that that they do are very interesting and they're they're targeted to 11 to 15 year olds i mean there is no other there's no other demographic that will actually get in there and spend that kind of time in playing all of these little challenges and games and i was looking at um the brand integration that clarks the shoe brand did within uh, uh you know within uh, i want to say um roblox mm. so very interesting there was uh, there were this gaming replays on youtube it was all over the place there's a huge long tail on that branding and in that gaming replay this this gamer talks about how you know there are all these little golden shoes lying around but you don't have to really pick it up if you want to you can but um the first 100 users got something in return IRL right so there's there's so much going on out there i kind of feel left out but i also kind of want to know what's happening because i want to be able to uh, at least have a conversation about it so i went in looked at it it was interesting but i would never i would never spend my time there but doom scrolling through tiktok i'm down i'm down for it and you know i'll i'll I'm a I'm I would I love scrolling through it because I find new music there. I'm embarrassed to say it, but all the music that I find now is only through short video apps. But it's interesting to know how much something that never existed 3 4 four years ago has become such a huge part of our lives and it went through this entire up and down, right? It was first something that only young people did or somebody on the fringe did, then it became something that people ridiculed, then it became this huge thing where everybody was passing around TikTok little little videos and then suddenly India obviously uh, banned it, but then everybody picked up the gauntlet and built their own. And so now it's become a movement yeah. and it's become a source of livelihood, it's become a source of um advertising. And so it's you never I mean you never know how things are going to turn out, but um but the fact that it's still so young as a platform for me yeah indicates that unlike what's happening with twitter and i've been geeking out over everything that's happening with twitter and elon musk and i'm very curious to know how this all plays out but the one consistent narrative around twitter is that the cultural significance of the platform is orthogonal to the business of yeah. twitter and obviously that is why wall street has not been very kind yeah. to twitter over the years but tiktok is proving to be culturally significant and a very sound business very model. true but it's not overwhelmingly young only about 1/5 of their um, audience is yeah. below 18 yeah so it's a growing population and it's one of those popul- it's that it's that age group that grows up really fast mm. and they are in two different age groups really quickly so anand you listened to peter kafka's recent episode from recode what do you think yeah so ever since you recommended it to me i've been listening to the record media podcast and uh, this week he had on tony fidel of the ipod and nest fame who's of course written a new book about innovation and building yeah. companies and rich greenfield from um, uh, wall street and among many things they were talking about this catch 22 situation where we had a reasonably stable cable model which was high margin and now consumers have gone ahead and are on streaming apps on tiktok and their attention is now focused on a different platform where business models aren't entirely cooked and while netflix is still okay given they've achieved scale every other cable company thought that streaming was the next big thing and they've pumped a lot of money in there and now they're waking up to the fact that that business model is going to take probably two more iterations or two more evolutions before it settles down and they still have a business model that's already there that's thrive that's right that's giving them a lot more money that's right 
And so it takes me back to something Kara Swisher was saying, I think a couple of weeks ago about swapping digital pennies for cable dollars or traditional dollars or print dollars or something like that. The other way around. Or the other way around. Yeah, yeah. because, you know, it's lesser than yeah. swapping cable dollars or digital correct. pennies. Correct. Right. Yeah. But that's an interesting space to be. And of course, they also talked about uh, whether or not Elon Musk should buy Twitter. And oh my God. that is, I think, going to be a constant topic for at least the next three to four months. Do you think months. they'll make a movie? Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm sure someone's already writing the script. But I would imagine they would. But that was an interesting podcast episode. And um, he just launched another one about uh, misinformation. So I'm interested to see what Peter Kafka is is going to talk about over the next few weeks. Yeah. You were also going on and on and on about this whole discovery, Warner Brothers, yeah. this whole thing with uh, David Zaslav. And uh, you have a lot to say about it. So let's hear <laughs> it. Yeah. So on the one hand, I remember it was last March or April when the announcement first came out that at and was going to spin off a bunch of their acquisitions. And everything from Turner to um, to effectively creating WBD as we know it today. And it took them a year to do it. In most conversations around the sustainability of streaming companies, it typically will end with, okay, so it's going to be Apple and Amazon, Apple and Amazon, or Apple, Amazon, and Disney+. Plus. The folks who have diversity or the folks who have balance. The WBD entity finally took shape, I think, um, in April. And the first earnings call was uh, held by David Zaslav, who's their CEO. And it was interesting because he, of course, went after every streaming company. There was, he's, a, uh, he's an aggressive chap. But he was talking about how the biggest strength that WBD has is balance in the portfolio that they offer. And I went back to something you had shared on our Slack channel, I want to say two years ago, which was Recode Media's uh, a, a diagram. Oh yeah, which we discovered is no longer hard coded and has got a lot of HTML yeah, so you elements. Can't, you can't, yeah, you can't download really, the yeah, image. I tried. Yeah. I tried downloading it and sharing it with our team, and it yeah. made no sense to correct, anybody. Correct. Because they, I mean, it's clever because it's going to change, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I had to take. I had to spend some time trying to figure out who owns who right now. But David's comments make so much sense because he was talking about how he's had to make some tough moves. Mm-hmm. He shut down CNN Plus because they already have a bunch of properties and CNN Plus didn't really fit in. He's pulled the plug on a on a DC movie that was mid-shoot. Um, he's had a bunch of senior executive layoffs. So he's been doing some stuff behind the scenes where he said, look, we have premium content, we have filler content, we have cable and we have streaming. And he believes that one of the things that will set them apart is the fact that they have balance And they also have multiple tiers. They have the premium tier, they have what's called ad light, and they also have a completely ad supported tier. So they have the ability to basically cater to everybody. And if they make the right moves to steady the ship, I think these are the folks who can weather the storm. Folks like Apple, folks like Amazon, who have large coffers, and folks like WBD, who have so much going for them that they just need to weather the next 24 months. And I wouldn't be surprised to hear about them more and more and more alongside Apple, Amazon, and Disney+. Plus, Mm. While, of course, Netflix shows us the way uh, to survive on the back of what they have already built. So it's going to be interesting, but I suspect we're going to be seeing a lot more of them. Yeah. That article, that was a Wall Street Journal article, uh, which was was linked off from Ben's article, right? Yes. Statutory. But, you know, that article is very, very interesting because... It, it's representative of the times that even we are in as, as startups, as organizations today, because capital is drying up. And there's a lot of focus on what we can do in actually making ourselves profitable, moving closer to getting more capital in an efficient manner and spending it in an efficient manner. And uh, going back to the TikTok story, TikTok is actually poised very well to attract more marketing dollars into the um, into advertising because they seem to be very effective with bottom of the funnel stuff as well, not just out of the funnel branding, uh, you know, uh, things that actually cost a lot of money, but it's very hard to draw a straight line to actual conversions. And with this article as well, you know, when he was talking about, uh, when he was talking about how he's making all these cuts and you said, and it also says he pulled a plug um, mid-shoot. <laughs> and he also asked about some Clint Eastwood film saying, 
why did we produce it? <laughs> and every, did we think it was going to be a hit? And everybody says, well, not really. Then he said, why did we produce it? So everybody is, you know, talk, talking about the fact that he wants to have uh, a guaranteed hit and why not? One of the things that struck me of what was said, even in that earnings call, is that he said that we're not here to win the direct-to-consumer streaming war spends, yeah. right? Which is true. They have spent decades building their audience. The new guys are spending to actually get an audience. So it makes sense for a Netflix or even an Apple to spend that kind of money to announce that here is another choice. But Warner, Discovery, they have huge content slates and they already you know, have a huge following. So there is no, there is no reinvention of that wheel necessary for them. And they have to like double down on creating good content. And uh, I think he was also one of those pioneers uh, where they said that they will reimburse production on discovery. I remember this was a, this was a rumor when, when a lot of discovery shooting was happening in India, especially with the safaris and things, and people would actually spend their own money, produce it and then sell it to discovery and they would reimburse it. But they were not poning up money up front. So they, they were always very smart about how they spent money. But it's, it makes sense because they don't need to spend this kind of money trying to do something that somebody, that they, they're, not, they're not on the same comparative uh, line. Anyway, so yesterday we had an inter interesting conversation with somebody in the US uh, in the publishing space. And he was talking about, and you know, we are trying to get into the US as well with, with Voiro and uh, where we're having, we are talking to all these different people and trying to get a sense of what the market is looking like because India is not on the same platform or the same time as they are in terms of ad operations. And he was saying that back in the day when programmatic came on, that the entire industry kind of over-indexed on programmatic because it was so easy to adopt. It was, it just sounded so, it sounded so easy to do, right? But uh, down the line, what happened was that Everything uh, went into a spin. People started to get commoditized, as in the, the CPM started to get commoditized. There was a lot of data being thrown at them. And there's so much that's happening right now in terms of over-indexing because it's, like you keep saying, the current thing, right? It's the new current thing. And all what we're seeing this week was about how people have to hunker down, double down on doing things that are valuable, Yes, TikTok is making money, but are we also thinking about the attention arbitration, right? Yes, Warner Discovery is a powerful combination, but do you really need to spend spend those many number of marketing dollars behind things that is is technically not your battle to fight? Um, and you know, programmatic is the way forward, but are we over indexing on it? And India has really not yet caught up. The big guys have not yet caught up the way the US has. We're still fa fairly direct uh, uh, IO, but there's a lot to be unpacked here in terms of saying yes to something without really rolling it down the, the street to find out what is the impact, secondary impact, the industrial impact, the future impact of whatever decisions we are making. And uh, I'm excited to see what comes off all the regulation that we're trying to put in because we don't want to strap marketers. We don't want to, we don't want to switch off um, uh, cookies because I want to have ads that are relevant to me. And I'm hoping that relevance will, that the fact that I'm giving certain types of cookies will actually make these ads far more relevant because you know the nonsense that comes after you if you switch off cookies because you're just open to any kind of advertising, which I really don't want. I'd rather have a specific set of advertising. So it's been a good week and uh, I hope whoever has been listening has um, got good information and I hope our accents have, have cleared up a little bit because I know one of Anand's friends listened to us in Amsterdam and uh, he gave us a couple of pointers and we were like, oh no, that's our accent that's coming to the fore. But anyway, this is Kavita and Anand and we will see you next week. Bye.